anaesthesia. Unfortunately, this can be observed in the current civilization as well, where the human being is enslaved by his pernicious passions. Here is a recent example. People started exploring near-Earth space almost immediately after the ballistic missile and the atomic bomb had been invented. Rigdon. If humanity does not change its priorities in thinking towards the spiritual, then a sad fate awaits the civilization. As a rule, such civilizations are short-lived and exist for relatively short periods of time because they destroy themselves in wars. Anesthesia. Hmm. A hundred years, just like a thousand years, is nothing on the scale of the universe. Of course, practical observations of outer space objects are out of the question for a mortal human. Rigdon. Human life is fleeting. That is true. But the human being is much more than just a body. That is why much knowledge was given to people initially. First of all, about the phenomena that are invisible to the human eye. So since the earliest times, people knew about the structure of the world and the universe, and about the multidimensionality of the human being, his essence and mission. Another question is how such knowledge was usurped by the human ego, twisted beyond recognition by the mind limited in matter, and in what form it has been preserved to the present day. Anesthesia. Alas. As if on purpose, nowadays all this ancient knowledge of the peoples of the world is presented to people as mythology and ancient primitive beliefs and inconvenient facts, testifying to the knowledge of ancient people which has been unknown even to present day science until recently are not commented on. Also, the entire science is based solely on the materialistic thinking. In astrophysics, for example, to study astronomical events, analytical methods are often used for building models and theories and making predictions. Rigdon grinned. In the creaking cart of purely materialistic worldview, you will not go far in real science. Still, sooner or later, a true scientist will get to such scientific horizons where it won't be possible to use the existing supports on which the whole chain of human reasoning rests. Nowadays, people often try to explain the invisible in terms of the visible. So we have woo from wit. In many cases, theories and accidentally discovered facts don't match. Scientists, for example, still do not have a clear understanding of what, for instance, electric current is, what exactly gravitation or a black hole is, and nevertheless, they operate with these concepts. Yet, in order to have a comprehensive understanding and delve into the nature of such phenomena, it is necessary to have a fundamentally different world perception, which is qualitatively different from the material worldview. Anesthesia. Understanding of the phenomena from the spiritual world? Rigdon. Precisely. Anesthesia. Once you said, the universe is so vast that it cannot fit in the human consciousness, but there is not a single place in it where one could stick the thinnest medical needle without its tip resting against something or touching something. Rugden, that is really so, and answering the question, I will, touch upon only a few very important subjects of astrophysics naturally in a form accessible to human thinking. However, understanding the essence of what will be said can give the people of science an entirely different view of the world structure. I shall begin with the modern theory and assumption, which is stereotypical for the modern educated mind, of the Big Bang that as scientists believe happened at the birth of the universe. They substantiate this popular hypothetical theory with the laws of thermodynamics. According to the given assumption, the universe was compressed to a point, and after the bang, there appeared objects having a mass of around a billion tons and the size of a proton. Anesthesia. As they say, what they currently know is what they substantiate it with. Scientists think that they have studied well enough this branch of physics concerned with the laws of thermal equilibrium and conversion of heat into other kinds of energy, even the term of thermodynamics itself, when translated from Greek, describes their debates in the scientific community very well. Therme means heat, warmth, and dynamikos means powerful. Indeed, each of their disputes is full of heat and ardor. Rigdon. 
Impassioned speech is not yet learnedness. One storm is not yet a season of rains. He who is strong in dispute enjoys the victory of one man, while the one who knows brings victory to thousands. Anesthesia. As far as I know, the ratio of the powerful to the competent in modern science is disastrous in the sense that the former is numerous while the latter are far fewer. A knowledgeable person is valuable to any research team. He or she is like a proton. Translated from Greek, it means protos, the first. Like this elementary particle, which always has a positive charge and which forms all the atomic nuclei, so is a knowledgeable person who one can say supports all the research of this team. Rigdon. That's true. I hope that the knowledge which people will get will increase the number of the knowing, not only in science, but also in the society in general, and change the understanding of the world, including the origin of the universe. As I have said before, today people fondly believe that the universe was compressed to a point, and after its Big Bang, there appeared objects having a mass of around a billion tons and the size of a proton. Furthermore, this mistaken belief from the mind says that such objects are nothing other than microscopic black holes. Alas, I have to disappoint the ardent theorists. Such objects of a size of a proton and with a mass of around a billion tons are non-existent. However, there exists the following phenomenon. In the nature of space, there are objects that are formed from information clusters, accumulations, during the discharge of information from matter when the latter gets into the area of the black hole. The largest and the heaviest compounds that information clusters can form are objects in size slightly larger than the proton and with the mass of little less than 1 gram, or 0.8 grams to be more precise. These objects are short-lived, that is, they exist for only fractions of a second and then they break up into individual building blocks. The formation of such objects is indeed directly related to what people call black holes in the universe. Anesthesia Objects slightly larger than the proton, according to the latest research, the radius of the proton is 0.84184 femtometer. One femtometer equals 10 to the minus 15 meters. If we consider what you said, that such objects have the mass of slightly less than one gram, then they turn out to be really heavy objects from the microcosm. This information is exceptionally interesting. In the light of this, people may have at least three questions. What are information clusters, building blocks? What is the discharge of information from matter? And how is the formation of such particles connected with black holes in the universe? Rigdon, in this material world, everything, including what is currently known to people, from subatomic particles to atoms, from specks of dust on your shoes to accumulations of galaxies in deep space, everything exists thanks to structured information. It is structured information that creates matter and sets its priorities, volume, shape, mass, and other characteristics. I draw your attention to the fact that we are now speaking not about the concept of information that is familiar to the human brain, but of a somewhat different manifestation of it. Although even in the usual understanding, the world information has several meanings, including the following, to think, teach, interpret, and to shape, form, create. For ease of understanding, let's call such structured information, information building blocks. What are information building blocks in practice? Perhaps I shall explain this with an associative example that is easy to understand. Imagine that you've decided to have a kind of experiment. For this, you need water, a glass aquarium, and small building blocks for making shapes. They are as light as foam plastic, and their colour is, let's say, not the usual white, but transparent. Your actions. In an empty glass aquarium, you build a beautiful castle using the transparent building blocks of foam plastic, like child's toy construction set, with a lot of rooms, towers, and so on. When you connect one transparent building block with another, there appears a certain colour that is visible to your eye. In other words, you have a plan in your head how to build a castle. You have the will to create it and force by applying which you are building with this unusual material. Next, 
you have built the castle, which became visible thanks to such connections, and now you can admire its beauty, volume, and the complexity of its architecture. Then, continuing the experiment, you fill the aquarium with water. What will happen? Suppose the water will be filling the aquarium with such a force, pressure, that it will destroy the castle you have constructed. At that, the foam plastic building blocks, which once were the walls, roofs and elements of your castle, will now start to float to the water surface, some separately, becoming invisible again, and others will float in groups, clusters, which still remain visible to the eye, since they are connected with each other. Eventually, your entire structure will break up under the pressure of the water into separate building blocks, which will again become transparent. So as they say, not a single trace of your castle will remain. If you remove all the water from the aquarium, the foam plastic building blocks will sink to the bottom. The blocks themselves, without your plan, will and application of force, will never take shape of an orderly built castle. This will simply be a chaotic handful of transparent foam plastic building blocks, invisible to the eye. You may shake your aquarium for as long as you wish, even for eternity, shuffling them. Yet they will never become a castle until you build it again. So, these conditional transparent building blocks are a figurative comparison to the information that creates matter, setting certain parameters, shape, volume, mass, and so on, to it. And the visible castle is already one of the material products of the ordered information which forms elementary subparticles that make up atoms, molecules, chemical compounds, and so on. That is, the matter of the universe. And finally, the will, the construction plan, and the force of application are the main constituent forces of the spiritual world that manifest themselves in this world. Anastasia, you are saying that the basis of all matter is information? Rigdon, that is correct. The atom, for example, consists of elementary subparticles, which in turn are made up of a certain number of information building blocks. The same is true for everything in the universe. However, once information is removed, then what we call matter vanishes like a hole of a donut after you eat it. Anesthesia. In other words, here's a basic view of the event. As long as there is a donut, the hole exists. But once the donut is eaten, the hole vanishes as well. Is this how matter disappears too? If there's no information, there's no manifestation of matter. Rigdon. Quite right. By the way, here's an interesting fact. The amount of matter in the universe is constantly changing, and these fluctuations, both towards its increase or decrease, can be quite significant. At that, the amount of information is always stable, due to which the overall mass of the universe has not changed, even by one billionth of a gram since the day of creation up till now. Anastasia. Yes, this is something to think about. Rigdon. So the amount of information in the universe has been constant since the day of its creation. However, if just the single information building block had disappeared, the entire universe would have vanished as well. Anesthesia. If a part disappears, the whole disappears too. Now I begin to understand what the end of the story of the expansion of the universe will be. Rigdon. The universe will simply expand to a certain size and vanish. All ingenious is simple, as always. These information building blocks of the universe never disappear anywhere. That is, they never leave the boundaries of the universe. In our example of the aquarium, and exist in it in a strictly ordered manner. Let me emphasize that by themselves, without a certain construction plan and the will of the constructor, they will simply be a disordered pile, chaos on the bottom of the aquarium. As for the material world of the universe, these very information building blocks, among other characteristics of formation of matter, as I have already said, set the parameters of its mass. They determine a particular place in the universe for the created matter. It is ordered information, those very information building blocks, located strictly in their places, that distinguishes a quark from a quasar. Let's put it this way. It is the orderliness of information according to the master plan that makes the universe alive. Anastasia, 
In other words, you are saying that everything in this world is strictly ordered and exists according to a definite plan, the will, and the force of the constructor. But this proves that our universe was created artificially and did not form chaotically by itself as is assumed. Rigdon. Absolutely, and it is quite possible to prove it scientifically. It is not that difficult if one goes in the direction indicated in your previous books and sums it up with the information given here, as well as with the latest scientific discoveries. The life of the universe manifests itself in a constant exchange of information which puts matter in motion, interacting with itself. It causes primary physical and chemical reactions. Consequently, various processes take place. For instance, explosion of massive stars, the birth of new ones, and so on. Anastasia. Incidentally, speaking of explosions of massive stars, you know, I got interested in astronomy and allied sciences right after you had said that during the life and active work of Agape Pachesk, in particular in the summer of 1054, a bright star appeared in the sky which could be seen even during the daytime. You also mentioned then that it had been the light that had reached the Earth after the explosion of a supernova located in the Taurus constellation in our galaxy. I read that the supernova remnants are now observed as the expanding Crab Nebula with a neutron star, a pulsar, in its centre, which the exploded star turned into. Interestingly, the radio wave beam of this pulsar still slides along the Earth, just like a beam of a rotating lighthouse slides along the sea surface as a signal for ships. Surprisingly, this was the first neutron star in the universe, which scientists started associating with supernova remnants. I was amazed by the fact that the size of the star is assumed to be only 25 kilometres. For example, it is actually a star the size of a town, but which powers the huge Crab Nebula. The neutron star is very dense. The most interesting thing is that recently they started observing unexpectedly powerful emissions of gamma rays coming from this pulsar in the Crab Nebula. Rigdon. Many interesting things have been happening lately, not only on this planet, but also in space. Anesthesia. Yes, the process of birth of new stars is very interesting and informative. Rigdon, smiling. Undoubtedly so, but this process is also quite destructive for many contemporary theories. The truth is that the visible process of star formation, which today can be observed by scientists, begin with the formation of the so-called pre-stellar core. In other words, despite modern equipment, astronomers are capable of discovering, seeing, observing the birth of a new star, only at the stage of formation of dense clouds of gas and dust. That is, when matter as a result of interaction begins to radiate energy, in particular, what people call light. And only after studying the spectra, which clearly indicate compression of individual sections in gas clouds, do they make conclusions about the birth of a new star. However, astronomers cannot answer the question of how these clouds interact and what makes them contract. Nor can they say where these clouds of gas and dust come from, why they appear, and all the more, why and how not only isolated stars, but at times entire star clusters are formed out of the small amount of matter located in these clouds.